Oral questions by members? Leader of the Official Opposition. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last Friday, this Premier stumbled forward with a billion dollar vanity museum project that nobody asked for, with no business plan, and no credible explanation as to why they were doing this. And this, keep in mind, is at a time when the NDP is clawing back funding for parents with autistic children, at a time when one out of five British Columbians do not have access to a family physician, when six people a day are dying of overdoses, the highest in history, where there are more than four violent random assaults taking place every day in the city of Vancouver alone, and where gas prices are the highest in North America right here in British Columbia. And yet, this Premier thinks that now is the time to blow a billion dollars on a poorly thought out vanity museum boondoggle. So my question is a straightforward one. Will this Premier, having heard the overwhelmingly negative reaction to this boondoggle, do the right thing and scrap this project? Minister of Tourism and Arts. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. When we formed government in 2017, we made it very clear that we were going to modernize the People's Museum, the Royal BC Museum. And the reason why we're doing so is because it's seismically unsafe. The members opposite don't mention that. They knew in 2010, they were briefed, they were well aware that the building, which, which houses our collective history, let's put it, put it into context, seven million objects spanning over 27 kilometers, and the members are laughing. But you know, two floors are under sea level, and if there was a flood, we've seen major change in our climate over the years. If there was a flood, we would be wiping out our collective history. That is not a decision that we were going to make. The members opposite made a calculated decision not to protect the People's Museum. We are investing in the People's Museum to protect our shared history, our collective history, and to support the tourism sector. The members opposite said I haven't heard them say anything about how important museums are to tourism and how important they are to invest in infrastructure. Members, Leader of the Official Opposition, Supplemental. Well, thank you. That was an interesting answer, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this building has served the residents of... Uh, I, ha I haven't got to the best part yet. Um, apparently... Uh, this uh, government has concerns about floods. Now, this building, of course, has served the Greater Victoria area in this province well for over 50 years. Suddenly, the NDP are concerned about floods. Well, that's interesting because apparently they're not concerned about the 60,000 people a day that go underneath the Massey Tunnel. Apparently, that flood concern. <laughs> If this Premier is so stubbornly wanting to go ahead with one of the dumbest capital decisions I've seen since they cancelled the 10-lane the 10-lane Massey Bridge that would have been opening this summer, if they want to stubbornly go ahead with this, then British Columbians deserve to see a full and unredacted business case. And I And it's important that I say full and unredacted business case because we don't want to see the joke of a business case they tried to trot out when they were trying to justify their ridiculous eight-lane tunnel at the Massey Tunnel. And I'll remind everyone in this House that that so-called business case didn't include a value-for-money analysis. It didn't include a risk analysis. 
It didn't provide any of the construction costs or the cost of land acquisitions. It didn't include a cost comparison between their ridiculous eight-lane tunnel idea that nobody supports and the 10-lane bridge project that came in $600 million under budget. No, there wasn't even a description Members. of cash flows or the cost of tearing out the old tunnel, Mr. Speaker. So my question to the Premier is straightforward. If the Premier thinks that this vanity museum project can withstand the scrutiny, will they table a full unredacted business plan today in this House? Minister of Tourism and Arts. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I forgot to welcome the blast, blast, the blast from the past into these chambers, coming in here, bringing fear. There's no need, there's no need, to, there's no need to fear monger. I've, I've got the request. I've got Honourable Speaker, Honourable Speaker, I have the Would the members be interested in getting an answer? If you stay quiet, the answer will be provided. Minister. Thank you, Honourable uh, Speaker. So yesterday the media did request uh, for the business case. We've heard it in the media today that government is working on it. My team are working around it. No, with all, with all due respect, we are members. We're working on getting, if you let me finish, handing members. over the material as quickly as by the end of this week. There are processes. And having the opposition heckle the fact that there are processes for due diligence for government who go through rigorous processes to build business cases, the answer is yes, we will be handing over the business case as soon as possible. Leader of the Official Opposition, second supplemental. Mr. Speaker, it is rare that I am completely at a loss for words in this House. <laughs> but I got to tell you, to hear a minister, days after they've announced a $1 billion vanity museum project, stand up and say, uh, in re reference to the business case, they're working on it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just a message to the minister that you're supposed Members. to have the work done before you announce a billion dollar food <laughs> Is it any wonder, is it any wonder that every single capital project these characters have under their jurisdiction has been behind schedule and over budget? Is it any wonder? Is it any wonder that the Site C project has gone from $8 billion to $16 billion under their watch? This is a staggering level of incompetence. And I have, a, I have a straightforward question to the minister who is apparently still working on this, pro, on this business case. Will the minister at least release the portions of the business case she is working on to this house so British Columbians can better understand how much of a boondoggle this really is? <laughs> Minister. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, I did answer the question that the member opposite asked, and I said yes. The business case has been approved. It's approved. That's what we announced on Friday. The request to Members. hand over a document that has to go through rigorous processes, part of government and due diligence. But the answer is yes. We are going to be transparent. But let me take a moment to talk about how important this project is. The business case informed that we need to protect our province's asset. Across the street from this legislative chamber is our shared history, Honourable Speaker, and our government is not going to take the risk through an earthquake, through floods, to wipe out our collective history. Those are calculated decisions that the members opposite chose to do. But we have come, public, come forward to the public that we are building a new, modern, state-of-the-art facility that is going to be accessible. It's going to be built with mass timber supporting the forestry sector. It is going to be a magnet for international visitors to come to Victoria, province's capital, to access the state-of-the-art museum. 
more to tell you, Honourable Speaker, but I wish that the members opposite during BC Museums Week would be celebrating this important investment. Yeah. Opposition House Leader. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, so wh wh which is it? Is the, the minister on one hand says that they're working on the business plan, and then the next minute she says we're working on, I, I assume, uh, working on releasing it. Uh, she's she's put, putting out, the minister is putting out little bits and pieces and details in, in a press conference last Friday, uh, which 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 was really just, a, just to announce the expenditure of a billion dollars with with not much to support it. Then in other media interviews, you get a little bit of, a little piece of information here, you get a little piece of information there. She's all over the map, just like this plan, Mr. Speaker. British Columbians were were, were shocked and dismayed. At, at the announcement of an expenditure of $1 billion for a vanity museum project. And not only uh, does this reflect a premier and a government that's completely out of touch with the struggles that British Plumbers are facing today, but they, 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 haven't, they, haven't even, they haven't even given any details about a business plan. There wasn't even a rendering. There was not even a picture of what this museum might actually look like. There was no design details released. And in fact, this is what the minister said, uh, said about this, and I quote, I don't want to tell British Columbians what it's going to look like. It's an open canvas. End quote. A billion dollars of taxpayers' money on this project, and it's an open canvas? Are you kidding me? No business plan, no design details, not even an explanation as to why it's going to take eight years. Again, the question to the, to the, to the Premier is, Will the Premier either scrap the project today or stand up and release the business plan or the bits and pieces of the business plan that informed an announcement of $1 billion for a vanity museum project? Here, here. Minister of Tourism and Arts. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. So I'll remind the members that in 2017, in our throne speech, we committed to modernizing the museum. In 2018, we were transparent about the process that we were building the collections and research building in Colwood, which is going to house our archives, which are important institutions that help inform reconciliation. Along the way, we have made it clear to the public through engagement by saying, what does a new modern museum look like? We have gone to the public about, about what a new modern museum could look like. We have spent years from day one, since we got elected in 2017, to build a concept plan, build our business case, we came forward to the public on Friday that the business case has been approved, and we are doing the work, we are doing the right thing. To answer the member's question, yes, we are going to hand over and share the business plan. But I want to remind the member opposite, the context in which he's saying, did you have any indicative designs? Yes, they're indicative designs. But the public said they want to be a part of this process on what a new, imagined, reimagined 21st century museum is going to look like. That is the commitment that British Columbians are asking for from us. So, to answer the member's question, yes, we are going to hand members, over the business case. Members. I want the members opposite during this moment in chambers to admit the fact that on day two of the BC Liberal coming into this house, the first thing he says he's going to do is cut an investment in collect protecting our shared history. Shame on the minister opposite. Opposition House Leader, supplemental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, that is absolute, utter nonsense, and the minister should know it. The, for, since 2017, there's been discussion at the Royal BC Museum about a $50 million renovation, an $80 million upgrade, a $100 million upgrade. And just last year, the, to great fanfare, the minister announces that there's going to be a, 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 the shutdown and the renovation of the Old Town exhibit in the existing museum. And then only months later, suddenly the entire building needs to be knocked down and replaced with a $1 billion vanity project. British Columbians are saying, give us a break. They can't afford gas. They can't afford to put groceries on their table. They can't afford housing costs and rent. And this is the priority that the, that the province brings forward. It's outrageous. 
Now, not only did the, did the tourism minister reference uh, um, this billion dollar project as being an open canvas, but here's another thing that she said to the media yesterday, and I quote, business cases contain thousands and thousands of pages of documents, end quote. But an important detail, not a single one of those thousands and thousands of supposed pages have actually been released for British Columbians to, to see. Somehow, before coming up with a design, government wants us to believe uh, the, this open canvas is fully costed at $1 billion. And they're going to move ahead almost immediately to close the existing museum for eight years, presumably while they figure out the details. That's not how you're supposed to build major projects uh, uh, to the minister. People are actually going so far as to call this project Fast Ferries 2.0. To, to, to the minister. All the same ingredients. To the minister. Will, will the, the, the minister release a full, unredacted business plan, or are they just too afraid to show the details of this billion dollar vanity museum project? Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker. Um, first, I just want to make one point. The only vanity project in this place is that member thinking he can sit on this side of the House, Honourable. Oh. The second, the second, the second point, the second, the second Members. point I want to make, Honourable Speaker is listening to them talk about business plans. The minister said the business plan is going to be tabled. But you know what, Honourable Speaker? You know what, Honourable Speaker? We are still waiting for tabling of the business plan of the Portman Bridge that that, that <laughs> member said was going to be tabled when you got on this side of the house. There was never, there was never a business plan Ma tabled members. for the Portman Bridge, Honourable Speaker. In fact, Honourable Speaker, members. in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, oh, 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 can't, that's the other thing, Honourable Speaker, since he arrived here yesterday, all we have heard is he's going to cancel a museum, he's going to cancel a tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who is the best buddy of Maxime Bernier would suddenly now become the leader of cancel culture. Members, 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 order. Members. So, Honourable Speaker, when I listen to that side of the House, one, they don't want to protect the collective cultural history of the province of British Columbia. The Minister said a business plan is being tabled, and the Leader of the Opposition seems to make a big deal about it, but I'd just like to remind him, I'd like to remind the Leader of the Opposition, Members. I'd like to remind the Leader of the Opposition that uh, when he stood in 2008 with the Premier and promised to extend SkyTrain to Surrey and Broadway, he announced a plan that would be $3.1 billion, 2.8 to, oh, he says blah, blah, blah. I guess he would say that, because when he was four, Finance Minister four years later, there wasn't a dime in the budget for any of those projects. Member for Saanich North and Islands. Members. Member for Saanich North and Islands. Mr. Speaker, on Friday, our Premier stood and announced an $800 million monument to colonial storytelling, the rebuilding of the BC Museum. 
In the presser, the Premier said, quote, the stories told here have failed to accurately reflect our colonial history or include everyone, end quote. Yesterday, in question period, the Premier and then today, the Minister said that we don't, that they're surprised that we don't support, quote, investing in our collective history, end quote. Well, Mr. Speaker, this is the challenge that we face. It depends on where you sit, because as uncomfortable as the truth is, the history the surprised Premier and Minister today is celebrating is the grave robbing of my ancestors. The museum has had no problems telling the story of natural history. It's the woolly mammoth, well-loved feature. Everybody can agree. Old Town breathes life into the adventurous spirit of explorers and settlers. The museum's problem is how they relate to indigenous people, Mr. Speaker. It has been identified as a terrible place for indigenous people to work. It cannot be fixed by a bigger, brighter, shinier museum built with mass timber and wrapped in a Lekwungen inspired veneer. A new shrine to house the systemic rot is not the solution. Mr. Speaker, through you to the Premier, does he not understand that this announcement is actually a powerful act of aggression, a power play? wrapped in the rhetoric of reconciliation. Minister of Tourism and Arts. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. And I have the deepest respect for the member opposite uh, as a fellow Indigenous person who stands in these chambers, um, representing not only your constituents, but also your heritage. I, I appreciate the words, Honourable Speaker, that the member is sharing. Um, there's a lot of work going on at the Royal BC Museum. There have been complaints about the workforce and we're trying to fix it. We have a new CEO. We've been committed from day one that we were going to modernize the museum. And that includes the way people work there, the way the exhibits are shared, working with the First Nations, whose territory it's on. It is on the Lekwungen territory. We are working hand in hand. I say paddle together about working hand in hand with the Songhees, with the Esquimalt to have their validation, to follow protocol in a good way about the work that is going to carry on moving forward. But with respect, Honourable Speaker, my village in La Clozac is very far from here. Kids in schools in the Nass Valley can't come down here and access this museum. The Royal BC Museum, the Royal BC Museum is the people's museum. It needs to be brought into the 21st century, which means I don't know how the members opposite can't resist heckling. I'm talking about our important history. I'm talking about sharing our important history beyond Bank Victoria with the rest of the province. It's the People's Museum through technology, through virtual tours, by digitizing our shared history to the member opposite. When we learned, which we're working on, we're coming towards the, the one year anniversary of the 215. The archives building plays an important role in reconciliation and repatriation. When I saw images of the children at Tecamloops, you were going to keep mocking? I wish I had pictures of my grandparents and I understood what they went through. That institution is an important vessel for education and we are going to do things better. I want to commit to the member opposite and to all members of these chambers that we must do things better. We must bring it into the 21st century. We must work with Indigenous communities and we are going to reset the relationship with the RBCM. That is precisely what was called for in the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Thank Peoples you. Act Action Plan. Thank, Thank you, Speaker. Member for Sanitary and Auckland Island. Member for Sandwich North and Island, supplemental. The member, the minister, is lucky. She's lucky because her items are back in her community, many of them. That repatriation, many of the repatriations up there has already happened as part of a treaty, which Indigenous nations around this province are waiting for in order to be able to have our items come back home, Mr. Speaker. 
Most Indigenous people I speak to have no desire to visit their culture in a museum. Mr. Speaker, this announcement brought me to tears multiple times this weekend, right here. The cultural significance that museums and the Premier call artifacts are not oddities from another century, Mr. Speaker. They are meaningful to our living and breathing cultures, contemporary items. In fact, some of the items in the museum's collection are the missing puzzle pieces to the broken parts of our culture. The parts that we haven't had the benefit to access because they've been locked away in cabinets in the basement. Growing up in the Western culture, we learned to celebrate museums and the strictly curated narratives that they tell about our history. But we want our sacred items home. We want our technologies. We want our innovations. We want our designs. We want them in the hands of our teachers and our children so that they can be inspired by their ancestors at home. We don't want to visit our culture locked behind glass. We want it on the land and on the water where our culture lives and breathes, Mr. Speaker. Mariah Charleston, the Vice President of the New Chalmers Tribal Council, tweeted, quote, I wonder how many stolen items could be repatriated to the appropriate owners with that amount of money, end quote. Mr. Speaker, why is this BC NDP government spending $800 million to warehouse Indigenous culture and in 2020 only invested $500,000 in $30,000 increments for Indigenous nations to repatriate their ancestors and items of cultural significance? Minister. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, there are many things that I agree with the member opposite. This is why we have to do this important work. This is why we need to bring it to the 21st century. The member opposite can shake his, shake his head. I, I am being sincere in telling you. I have told my staff who stole and raided my cupboards in our kitchens as Niska people, as, as Gitsan people. Our bowls, our, our tools are over behind glass cupboards. I, I have said that. I'm not trying to be pro provocative or politically incorrect. Insti these institutions were created at a moment in time. Times have changed. All members in these chambers voted for the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. We are going to do things differently. And that includes repatriation. That is a part of our action plan. But I, I want to say in these chambers, for the record, with all due respect, I'm Niska Gitsan Cree in Ojibwe. My daughter is Haida. We don't all agree. We don't all think the same. That is the importance of self-determination. There are some nations that want their archives to be in these institutions as, as, an ex as opportunities for learning, to understand how things were created, to teach. That is what institutions like the Royal BC Museum are intended to do. And we're going to fix things. But the members opposite who kind of mock and make jokes as like, like cancel culture, more, now more than ever, we need to use institutions like the museum to bring us along, to bring up our awareness, to have understanding, especially here in BC, where so many Indigenous people have Thank not you. had the best experience Thank with the you. Crown. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Member for Kamloops, North Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, the, the excuses are getting hard to keep track of, but let's make one thing very clear. The Minister keeps talking about protecting a collection. I will point out to the Minister that this side of the House has not once taken issue with the $224 million being spent in Colwood to make sure there's a proper storage facility for artifacts from British Columbia's museum. So let's take that off the table right from the get-go. The Minister says during Museum Week, I can't believe this. Well, I have news for the Minister, museums across this province were hoping that instead of having to beg and beg and repeatedly beg the Minister for $50,000 here or $25,000 there, that on Friday they might have had an announcement that supported museums across this province instead of a billion dollars. Instead of a billion dollar vanity museum project for the Premier, 
that has no business plan, no timelines, and no expectation it will ever be done properly, let alone the timeline that Old Town gets shut down with no mention of this happening. And in mid-renovation, magically, the building needs to be torn down completely instead of renovated. Now, this isn't just the opposition saying this. I have lots of quotes, but I'll just read one. This is what George Fraser wrote, and I quote, Has the Premier lost his marbles? He has certainly lost my vote. A billion for a museum today will explode to a billion and a half eight years from now. End quote. When will this Premier, when will this Minister stop playing games with the business plan, agree to release the full, unredacted, not working on, we're working on release means that they're working on redacting the heck out of it. When will this Minister release the full, unredacted business plan for this open canvas of a boondoggle for the Premier's Vanity Museum project? When the question was asked, everybody was quiet. I appreciate it. Let's hear the answer now, so everybody should be quiet. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I've sat in these chambers for 30-something uh, question periods. There have been no questions about tourism. Uh, the member opposite has asked me five questions now and has not mentioned tourism once. I've answered to the questions members, that members have asked. I've said, yes, we will members, release it. Members. It, let the chair hear the question and answer, please. Minister. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I've, I've said yes. We are going to release the business plan, but I want to uh, mention what the tourism industry, what Paul Nursey, the President and CEO of Destination Victoria, said about the museum. The Royal BC Museum has been and will continue to be a vital and essential demand driver for the visitor economy of Greater Victoria. At, at Destination Greater Victoria, we are excited about the significant capital investment downtown on the Inner Harbour in the heart of the capital city. We believe this investment will elevate the Royal BC Museum experience to become globally competitive. We also acknowledge the years ahead during construction will have challenges to overcome, but we are also hopeful that the strategy that the Royal BC Museum has put in place will help to mitigate these temporary impacts. We are a forward-looking city and organization, and we look forward to what is to come. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The bell ends the question period.